Okay, so <clears throat> this is priority ceiling protocol. So before we uh, understand what how priority ceiling protocol works, first we'll understand the terminologies associated with priority ceiling protocol. So one thing you need to understand about priority ceiling protocol is in the OS when the resources are allocated at the starting itself, starting of the uh, you can say OS itself, it is declared that which resources. Uh, which tasks would be using which resources. So it's already known that, uh, for example, here T50, T7, T10 would be using R3, T40, T4 and T6 would be using R2 and somewhere in their task lifetime, they might use that resource. <coughs> so according to this, the resource is giving a, given a ceiling value and that is the maximum priority of the, uh, of the tasks that are going to use the resource. So here we are just assuming that task number is the priority of the task itself. So here it would be seven. Here it would be four, and this is increase uh, decreasing priority. So basically, one is the highest priority, and sixty four is the lowest priority. Uh, T two would uh, and R one would have the ceiling of T two that is two. <clears throat> now there is another term associated with this, with it is called as current system ceiling. So one mistake with that we do is we feel that current system ceiling is the maximum of all the resources available but that is not how current system ceiling works current system ceiling is basically the maximum as the name says it is the maximum of all the resources that are currently being in use that is why it is current system ceiling so <clears throat> how csc is for example if my r3 is being taken by some random task for example t50 has taken r r3 my system ceiling would be 7. So that is how system ceiling works. <clears throat> uh, now we'll just continue with this same example. If if my OS is completely empty, there is no, no resources being used. And uh, now I have T50 requesting R3. It would be immediately grant, granted R3. And uh, its ceiling would be set to, or uh, the current system ceiling would be set to 7. Now, if T48 comes into picture and it wants uh, maybe R2, wants R2 wants r2 it will not be granted r2 because the priority of t48 is less than is basically less than the current system ceiling it's 48 priority and 7 is the current system ceiling. it will not be granted it should either be it should the priority of the function should strictly be less than the current system ceiling <coughs> so if for example uh now uh this is doesn't see if t6 wants r2 r2 now it will be compared with the current system ceiling current system ceiling is 7 6 wants r2 6 is the god 6 will be given the resource so r2 is going to t6 <coughs> now my current system ceiling has changed completely now it is 4 <coughs> okay so again if another any other task having priority more than equal to or more than four will not be granted resource r2 okay but there is one small condition any task that is <clears throat> holding the current system ceiling will be granted any other resources that it requires so for example t6 is holding a uh, cac that is four and if it requires for an another resource for example if r1 was also taken by six so if it asks for R1, it will be granted R1. If it asks for R3, it will be granted R3, provided it is not in use. So if any task is is holding the current system ceiling right now, it will be granted the other resource. Okay, that is just an exception over there. Now, we move on to uh, an example wherein uh, how this affect, like how priority ceiling protocol actually uh, helps in uh, avoidance of deadlock. So as you can completely infer out is here a resource is given a priority and not the task itself. So uh, there are a lot of concepts in one concept is wherein if uh, T50 is holding R3, the current system ceiling is seven. So of course, uh, like T50 is getting like kind of the priority of seven. It will not get the whole priority of seven. Like another task can interrupt this task and, you know, complete this business. But if here if after this uh, let's uh, cancel this after this t7 is to uh, ask for a resource uh, so t7 is asking for r3 wants r3 of course r3 is in use so t7 will not be granted r3 we sh you should 
always be careful of this part any resource that is currently in use will not be granted to any other pri- even if the priority one uh, task wants the resource it won't be granted because it is in use right now that is how the how resource management works <laughs> so t7 will not be granted r3 but here now t50 will be given the priority like direct priority inheritance you can say t50 will be given the priority of t7 and any other task that is uh, lower than the priority of t7 will all be uh, uh, will all be holded off uh, until t50 re- uh, releases the resource r3 and t7 gets it <clears throat> so this is how in- even inheritance works in priority ceiling protocol so as you can see the priority is set to the resource right now so uh, you can quickly infer out that the resources having the uh, the most priority the highest priority will will be uh, freed up quick quicker than the resources that are having lower priority and that is how priority ceiling protocol works and why, why it is such an amazing protocol and <laughs>